Hey everyone, this is Amy Roskelly. I am the Conservation Education and Communications Manager for the Cuyahoga Soil and Water Conservation District. So I'm coming to you today from my backyard, my very messy backyard as you can see behind me here. It is a gorgeous early spring day here in April. I am wearing a hat because it's only about 50 degrees out. I do live right near Lake Erie, so it's a little bit cooler here than it would be a little bit further down south. So what I wanted to talk to you today is about native plants and then the importance they are they have in our environment. But before I do that, I wanna really encourage you to hold off on cleaning out those messy gardens there. I know everybody wants to get digging in the soil, not dirt, soil. Everybody wants to get digging in there and put in their, put in their flowers and put in their plants and everything. But if you can, try to hold off a little bit longer. The reason for that is there's a lot of critters that live in there underneath that, all those dead leaves and the twigs and the branches and everything. And they're using that for their winter home. They're hibernating in there. There's some cocoons in there um, and they're reproducing. So what they need is about three to four consecutive days of 55 to 60 degrees. And then they'll be able to come out, do their thing, and then you are free to go. You can do whatever you want in your gardens. I tend to wait until about Mother's Day, which is a little longer than most, uh, but I like to give them as much chance as they can. So native plants. Native plants are really good for your environment because they're meant to grow here in our weather where it's you know, 40 degrees one day and 80 degrees the next. Um, they have really long root systems, sometimes up to about 20 feet or so, which is crazy long and they're great at holding in soil, they're great at controlling stormwater, and they're really good for the different flora and fauna we have here in Northeast Ohio. And you want a lot of diversity in your life and you also want a lot of diversity in your landscape and your gardens as well. So I'm gonna to talk to you about native plants. What I won't do for you is try to pronounce all the Latin names. Um, I, I know them, I wrote them down, and I um, don't know how to pronounce them, and nobody really wants to see that anyway. So uh, I'm just gonna go with what I know, which are the common names and what conditions some of these plants need to grow. So let's go see what's in my gardens. All right, everyone, here is the first plant that's coming up. This is Ohio spiderwort. It's one of the first plants to come up in my garden. Um, it tends to bloom uh, May through July. It's one of the first blooming plants. So this plant has these beautiful little sweet purple flowers with yellow pollen um, in the middle of it. It gets to about two to three feet tall. It blooms in the morning. It's a very, very sweet flower. The only con I see with this plant is that it tends to flop when it's done blooming um, after, after it's completely done. So you wanna plant something around it just to make sure that you have some height around that plant because it's not going to stand up straight through the season. Uh, this plant requires full sun to partial shade. And again, it gets these purple and sometimes blue flowers. Very, very pretty. One of the, the earliest bloomers in your garden. It's really important to have something that blooms from as early in the season as possible until as late as in the season as possible. So the next plant we are gonna talk about is common milkweed. Uh, this plant is actually not coming up in my gardens yet. I checked and it's not there yet. It comes up a little bit later. Um, this is a picture I took from last season, probably about the end of April, uh, beginning of May. So this is what common milkweed looks like when it's blooming. And I will tell you that this plant, these flowers smell ridiculously good. Um, it attracts uh, butterflies and bees and flies and all these little critters and everything that, that use these um, as their home and, and to feed on. It also attracts me because when I walk down the stairs in the morning at this little milkweed patch I have next to my stairs, I stick my nose right in this flower. It smells ridiculously good. So here's a, a, a bigger version of the little milkweed patch I have right next to my stairs. A milkweed, common milkweed does require full sun. It gets these beautiful pink flowers. It grows to about four feet. These are actually taller than that. So if it's got the right conditions, it'll keep going up to about five feet or so. It starts blooming in June and it goes all the way through August. And of course it is the host for the beautiful monarch butterfly. It's the uh, important plant for monarchs because it is one of the only plants that they can lay their eggs on. Uh, their caterpillars can only eat milkweed leaves. Um, and that's common milkweed, swamp milkweed, uh, butterfly weed of, of the milkweed variety. Uh, we are on a flyway area for monarch butterflies. We live really close to Lake Erie. 
So the monarch butterflies are coming um, across Lake Erie and stopping here to feed and to lay eggs and then make their way down to Mexico for the winter and then vice versa um, when they come back in the spring. So here's the cute little sweet monarch caterpillar. This one has emerged from its egg and eaten through the leaf and will um, continue to eat that leaf voraciously as it will keep growing and growing and growing until it finally turns into a chrysalis and emerges as a monarch butterfly. It's an absolutely fascinating process to watch and you're really lucky to see this in your gardens. So the next one I want to talk about is called Culver's Root. And Culver's Root has not quite come up yet. Again, in the next couple weeks, it'll start coming out of the ground. But I wanted to remind you all to mark your plants. I have these little markers that I bought that I wrote on. They last through the winter. And I tend to not know where I planted things and then I guess the next spring. So this has really helped me keep track of what's in my garden and know what's coming up in the spring so I don't have to bug my plant knowing friends um, about what this plant is and should I keep it or should I pull it. Now I love all stages of plants from when they emerge from the ground to when they go to seed and when they die back in the winter. Um, I love watching Culver's root because these little buds come out and those are uh, what are going to turn into the other flowers and uh, it's just absolutely fascinating to see the way that this plant um, develops over the season. So Culver's root gets these beautiful white candelabra spikes of white flowers. Bumblebees absolutely love it. It requires a full sun to partial shade. Gets about five feet tall. Mine is a little shorter than that because it probably isn't quite in the right spot in my yard, but it's an absolutely stunning plant. Okay, so the next plant is called wild senna. And these little sprouts right here, what are, what are coming up right now, they look nice and sweet and everything, but this plant will eventually grow quite tall and be quite a beast in your garden. And I mean that in a good way. Uh, you can see the uh, previous year's growth um, that, that stays on there and then these little, um, these little buds emerge up from the root system. So wild senna, when it blooms a little bit later in the season, around July through August, uh, bumblebees absolutely love it. Any type of pollinator loves it. It is actually the host plant for sulfur butterflies as well. Um, I tend to stake this plant because it does get quite tall, around five feet and it, um, or taller, and it sticks out in various directions, so I stake this plant. Um, it does need full sun to partial shade. And again, as I mentioned before, I love every stage of a plant's growth. Uh, this is in the fall when it, the wild senna starts to form seed pods. It is part of the... Uh, legume family, the pea family. So it gets these long seed pods that eventually turn brown and you could harvest the seeds in there to grow more plants. However, I will tell you that this plant will spread quite a bit in your garden. So if you don't want a ton of it, you have to maintain it a little bit and pull those little baby plants if you don't want them where they started, they've started to grow. So for our last plant, this one wins the title for coolest name ever. This is Rattlesnake Master and it has started coming up out of the ground. And I'll admit to you that I didn't buy this plant because I knew anything about it. I bought it strictly for the name. So Rattlesnake Master, you can't really beat a name like that. It's a, it's a must for your garden if you just want to tell people that you have Rattlesnake Master in your garden. All right, cool name aside, this is a very important plant uh, for pollinators as well. It requires full sun. It gets these uh, super cool white bristly flowers on it. it. Grows to about four feet tall and blooms from about July through September. So it stays a little bit later in the season. And uh, this is just a reminder to try to plant as much as you can um, through the seasons. Have something that blooms as early as possible and have plants that bloom as late as possible. So you have something blooming all the time for our important pollinators. All right, you guys, so there you go. There's uh, five different plants that are coming up or not coming up quite yet in my gardens, but they'll get there. Every plant takes a little bit of time, a little bit of a different schedule. And I really encourage you to map out your gardens and to keep track of the time that they um, emerge from the ground and the time that they bloom and the time that they also go to seed as well. And that's going to um, really help you with your expectations of what's going on in your garden as well. So I, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to. Um, I'm going to give you all the Latin names and I'm going to, I'm going to try to pronounce them. So the first one we talked about was Ohio spiderwort. That one that blooms early, your first bloomer in about May. 
And the Latin name is, are you ready for this? Tradis Cantia Ohioensis. Tradis Cantia Ioensis. That's not right, but um, whatever. That's Ohio spiderwort. Common milkweed. I know, I know the first word of this. Asclepius. Am I right? Asclepius syriaca. That might be right. Um, Culver's root. Oh, I love that plant. Ver Veronica, <laughs> Veronica strum virginicum. I know virginicum is right, or I'm pretty sure. Veronica strum, I'm pretty sure is wrong. Uh, but I will, I'll have all these on the screen for you. Wild senna. Senna, I know that word. Senna heba, heba carpa. Sure. Rattlesnake Master, our last one. Um, and again, why you even felt like you needed to have a different name for Rattlesnake Master, I don't know. But that is Erangium er yuccafolium. Erangium yuccafolium. Sure, that's exactly what it is. So don't be intimidated by the Latin name. Slaughter them like I do. It's quite all right. Um, but when you do get your plants, make sure you do check into those if that's the exact kind that you want, because sometimes they, they can really vary. Um, they may even look the same. They may be a, a different plant or a different species. So have a great day, everyone. Happy gardening.